I think they have the potential to be. Mm -hmm. I don't say that they are yet. I may say this person's got a potential because people could get kicked out of the top 25. If they're not sending referrals, maybe one time we had a great <coughs> partnership, but now we don't. Maybe we got distracted, right? Maybe we're not vested partners anymore. So you can actually get kicked out of the top 25. Okay? Now, I believe in vested partnership versus one-sided relationship. So I really, number one, I only do business with people who do business with me. That, so I go to my insurance person and I say, look, I can get the insurance anywhere. What I want out of this relationship, just so we're clear, is I am going to be a vested partner, which means I'm going to stand up in front of a lot of people and tell them that you are my insurance person. You're going to get referrals out of this. But all I need you to do is bring, help us build our enterprise. Bring people to Monster Producer, be an active, see what I'm saying? Now, some people fall off the wagon on that, and I go back to them and I say, now remember, I can get the insurance anywhere. What I'm looking for is a vested partner, not a one-sided relationship. So I've got this little insurance person over here who's coming to class, being engaged, bringing us new people. And I do want to compliment you on coming to class. You come to class almost every time we have class. So, 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 okay, so I appreciate that. Because you are trying to learn and get better, which says a lot about your, your hunger. So my point is, it, I've gone to people and said, look, man, this ain't working for us. We're up here telling people you're our insurance person and you ain't doing anything to help, help us. So this person is showing a lot more value than you are. So that, think of that top 25 as a very special elite group of people. I feel like in real estate it's so different though because I've got a lender, I've got a closing mm -hmm. attorney, mm -hmm. whatever. But are they a vested? They are, all of their people are realtors. All of their I people know. are. So it, it's hard to say, I need you to refer all your people to me. Well, they... <laughs> I, I would say I need you to refer all of them, but I would say I need you to, I need you to be a vested partner here. Is I'm feeding you? This, so the way you say it is, I believe in vested partnership, not one-sided relationship. Mm -hmm. And the way this is working now is I'm feeding you business, but there, there, you see what I'm saying here? Mm -hmm. There's, we're, we're both business. We both own businesses. Mm -hmm. I own my little small business, and you own your little small business. Mm -hmm. So if I feed you three, four, five referrals a year, all I'm asking you, I understand you've got to serve all these people, but, but it would be great if you could help me. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid to have this conversation. But I don't think you need to be afraid to have this conversation. You are a feeder system for their business. Matt, you get your system set up, and so, yeah, you have your title attorney and your processor and your everything else, your lender, and you're just you're sending it like that. And so I guess you have to get out and work a little harder to find people that you can just work like that. Yeah. Now, some of you are going to build relationships with people where it's a great partnership and there's business being fed in both directions. and. It's kind of your girl or your guy, and I get that, right? They're sending business to somebody, right? I'd say, why aren't you sending it to me? Or, or I'd say it like this, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to be in a rotation here? I get that you got four other people, but what do I have to do to engage with you? And sometimes you having that conversation, they'll go, you know, all you have to do is ask me. But, you, but okay, I've had people say to me, look, what are... You, I need you to help us out here. You know, we're supporting you. We believe in you. We're promoting you. What can you do to help us here? And sometimes just awareness. Okay? All right. Finish this up over here, guys. Um, I think, I guess mine is just started to implement everything. Just, you know, I'm a week into being licensed officially. And so there's just a lot of fear with just moving forward and trying to get mm -hmm. it all put together. And, and one of the things I think for me I'm having, I guess, the main struggle would be I guess it, marketing something when I don't really know what I'm offering right now, and just trying to figure that kind of out is, is and you know, explanation of service, yeah. basic, fill a lot of stuff. So when you don't know what you're offering, how many of you guys watched the accountability session I did yesterday? Have you watched it yet? Sent it to you in an email? And you like those pre, 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 pre okay, good, okay, all right. Uh, what I talked about was when I was 25 years old, and you, you need to watch it, is I want to be a college basketball coach. That was my dream. And one of my mentors, we went to this big event, and this is speaking to your challenge here. We went to this big event, and Joy Lee McNeilis was the head coach at Memphis, University of Memphis. And uh, my mentor said, I want you to walk right over to that woman. She don't know you, and you don't know her. But I want you to walk right over to her and tell her you are Coach Michael Burt, and you coach at Riverdale High School, and there is nothing that you won't do to help her build a winning program in Memphis. 
Tell her you'll sweep the floors. Tell her you'll get the air conditioning in the unit. Tell her you'll watch your kids. <laughs> I mean, that's what he told me. I was scared to death. Because she's, she's a real nice woman, but she's kind of intimidating. I didn't know her. And she was sitting there watching the game, and I walked up there and I said, Joy Lee, I'm, I'm Coach Burt, and I coach at Riverdale, and I want to coach in college so bad. And I know you got a job at Memphis, and there is nothing that I won't do to be your assistant at the University of Memphis. I will sweep. I, mean, I went through all that stuff he told me to do. I even said, watch your kids. And you know what she said? She said, I like you, kid. She said, you call me on Monday. And I got an interview with her and got an opportunity to get that job. Now, what's the point? What can you offer when you don't know what you're offering? Time. Hustle. Yeah. Hustle. There ain't nothing that I won't do. Right? I may be in my first week, don't matter. Let me tell you what I can offer you. Hustle and grind and I will knock on every door and until you get it figured out, that's what you're offering. So don't get caught up in all the things you don't have. What you do have is an engine and that's the point of that story is, is some people will reward and say, look, I, man, you're, I like your hustle. That's all you need right now. I don't care if you know real estate yet or not. I just want, I want that. So don't get caught up in I'm waiting to, I'm getting ready to, in South we say fixing to. You know, right, just go. Just go. We'll figure this out as we go, okay? All right, finish this up. Something I got to go last, so I can steal all the best ones. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not a jump out with so much of it, but I mean, a little bit of everything, I'm being honest. But, um, in, you know, having the discipline to follow the system every day. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, I'm also just not using social media to promote my business at all. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think that's probably a missed opportunity. I just needed to figure out my comfort level and how I want to go about that. How I want to, because I don't want to have a separate account. I need to see just part of it, an extension of my life, because my business is an extension of yeah. me. That's what works for me. Yep. I know that what works for me is to be at parties, to be at social engagements, because I'm best one on one. Yes. So it has to reflect me, but I need to find a way that doesn't feel cheesy, it doesn't feel self promoting, mm -hmm. but just yep. what I do. Yep. Yeah. Come be part of it. Yeah. First sale you got to make every day. Yeah. First. Yeah. First sale you got to make every day is to your own self, though. Right? That's what you're saying. It, listen, you, 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 the first sale you got to make every day is to your own self. And so what she's saying is look, I know what I got to do. So that word discipline, discipline is a derivative of the word disciple. So we'll take a break on this one. Where does your future live? Where does your future reside at? It, in, it, in, it resides in your own imagination. I can't see your future. Therefore, I can't be responsible if you don't hit it. You can't see my future. If I can't see it, you can't see my future. Can I blame you when I don't reach it? No. So the concept, so I ask people, do you have a self-discipline? Discipline is a drift of the word disciple, which means to give yourself to a person or cause you believe in. So I ask people, do you believe in your own future? And they say, well, sure. And I say, where does it live? In your own imagination. All you need is a discipline to go do it. Will you become a disciple to your own future? So discipline means I'm going to work. I'm going to get up every, I'm going to plan my weeks out. <laughs> what does that actually mean? It means I'm going to plan, spend 7 to 15 minutes mapping my days out for the next day, right? It means I'm going to spend time prospecting every day to grow that sphere of influence. It means I'm going to go seven touches. It means I'm going to start asking for referrals. That's <coughs> discipline. Even when what? You don't feel like it. The difference between an amateur and a professional is professionals perform when they don't feel like it. Okay, amateurs say, you know what, I don't feel like it today. Like the agent I had this morning, on good days, I make 30 calls. On bad days, I don't make any. Who's determining the good day or bad day? You with me here? Okay. So when we come back, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to get into two pieces. The seven, touch, seven touches prior to the contract or to get a person to commit. Let's just say it that way. Okay? And the post-closing. How many people say that they really struggle with post-closing touches? Now Christy said, right? So I've got a deal and I, and I don't have a touch system afterward to stay involved in their life. And that could include events, automation, human touches. Okay? It just needs to be I keep roping you back in. I keep bringing you back to the, to the deal. The National Association of Realtors says it should be worth 5.7 referrals. I don't know how they got to that. In a digital world, it actually could be a lot more in my opinion. Don't you? 
That may be an old stat of old, just come eyeball to eyeball. I think in a digital world, could be worth a whole lot more than 5.7 referrals. So see every transaction, what I'm telling you, has a potential for six commission checks. And if you'll start seeing that way, you'll slow down long enough to spend a little time with these folks. All the money you need sitting in the, in the, in the back seat. It's not out the front windshield, okay? All right, let's take about a five minute break and then we'll, we'll keep moving this ball down the field. And the way we create opportunity, in my opinion, is by going out into the marketplace and finding problems that we can solve. Because money changes hands when problems are solved. Which goes back to our concept of how many people are in the funnel, how many conversations are we having, because I don't know what problems he has until we're having discussion with each other. And I ask discovery questions and he goes, man, I don't like this, don't like this, don't like, the, you know, don't like subdivision, used to like it, but don't like it, right? I'm looking at real estate deals, I'm trying to 1031 exchange, whatever you're saying, whatever you're listening to people say. So created opportunities where first, the, a lot of people fall off the wagon. They cannot create enough opportunity. So what is the solution? Some people try to purchase that opportunity by buying leads. In my opinion, that's not created opportunity, that's bought opportunity. The biggest salespeople that, that for example, I'll just use a Churchill for example. The top producers at Churchill do not take one Dave Ramsey lead. Now you say, why would they not do that? They're spending all kinds of money because they have gone out into the marketplace and created relationship and they would rather take a lead through a relationship than a lead that's purchased. They're creating that opportunity, okay? So, so for you, you may say, I really struggle with creating enough opportunity. And that is a clear indicator that you're not using enough strategies that we've been talking about. Hit list, farm club, we're not working a database, social, I'm just not doing enough to create a lead. Now, once the lead comes in the door and there's interest, then it moves, in my opinion, to, to three things. You build rapport, which is just I'm talking to you. We're finding common ground. We're building relationship. I do discovery, and then I share my explanation of service. We believe this. Because of that belief, here's what we do for our clients. If this sounds good to you, then you push them to something. Face-to-face -face meeting, go look at a house. Now, at that moment, when, when we have that, there's only one of two things going to happen, guys. They're going to say, I'm interested, or they're going to give you objection. Well, you know, appreciate the call, but timing's not right. Now that you understand how to overcome objection, you have a little formula when they give you that objection. Is there any other reason, I understand, is there any other reason outside of timing that would keep you from moving forward because I know when you and I talked the other day, you said that you really didn't like where you were living. You know, if I could show you a couple of places, would you at least go look at them? Because to me, if you, you know, you guys buy real estate or help real estate, the real magic is when they get, get in that property. It's when they can feel it, touch it, and taste it, and see it, and then they're like, man, then their little mind starts turning. If you can never get them there, then that really halts the process. So I always say if I could show you something would you at least go look at it? I mean, it'd take us, you know, an hour, 30 minutes, whatever to go, to go do it. So when they object, you go through your five steps of overcoming objection. And you see if you can get them to at least move them to something. Face-to-face -face me. I understand you want to wait to the spring, but if you and I met for 30 minutes, I'll be ready when the spring comes to feed you the properties you need. Can we at least meet face-to-face, -face, a cup of coffee, whatever. Now, if they say... If they don't give you objection, they say, look, I'm interested. I'd like to go out and look at some properties. I'm interested in talking about selling my property. Now they're interested. But could I tell you I'm interested and not move forward? Yes or no? Yes. It's like you caught me at a good time. I'm interested, but, but I'm really busy. This is now where the, what comes into play? The seven touches. And this is prior to an agreement. So I told you I was interested. We have good business chemistry, but, but people have different priorities. These priorities are fluctuating back and forth. It's like, hey, it's a priority today, but something came up, and now it's not a priority anymore. Or I talked to someone, and they told me it's a bad time to buy, or whatever the case may be. Somebody talked me out of this. So you really need a good seven-touch system after you and I agree that I am interested to keep pulling me back to you. Okay? So this is prior to an agreement. 
S okay, so give me some examples of what a good seven touch system there could be. Should it be you just call me every other day? No. It should be a combination of both linear and nonlinear touches of, hey, I know you told me that you're interested. I feel like we're losing a little bit of momentum. That'd be a linear touch. Can I get you in and let's go look at this property? Okay, linear. Nonlinear is, hey, I heard what you said during our talk. I went and found three properties that I think would be ideal for you. Or I've studied the comps, or I've looked at what I think I can list this at. I'm looking at how much money, you know, how much you can make off the sale of the property, and it's a little jab. Okay, this is where the video comes in, too. Hey, I, you know, I, I know I've sent you a few messages, but I hadn't got you. Just want to go ahead and give you an update. I've been working on your behalf. If we could get together. See, you need these little touches. So what I do, and I'm not saying this is right for you, but my touch system is you and I meet face to face, and then I summarize the meeting. I used to summarize it in an email. Now I summarize it and viewed it. So you and I met. We had great chemistry. I'm trying to recapture that energy between you and I. I don't want to ask you to meet again, so I do a little video. Hey, you and I met. You said you had three needs. I've already found two things for you, right? Let's talk in the next day. and let's, I don't want to seem desperate, but hey, let's talk in the next day and let's get this puppy moving, right? I may follow that up with an email. So now we've already got three touches right there. Then I may follow it up with a text message, okay? And it may just be think about this. One thing we didn't discuss was this, and I'm just softly touching. I may try to get him back face to face on the fourth touch. Hey, let's get back face to face. I found three things that I think you may be interested in. Let's go to early dinner. Let's sit around and talk about it. Don't make it stressful, right? Don't, don't put all the stress on, on, on people, okay? Now we're already at four or five touches. So I get you back face to face again. I show you, maybe at that time you give me a little objection. Well, wife and I have talked about it. Don't know if it's a good time for us to really buy a house. I talked to my banker, and we know what bankers always say. You can cut this part out, Jack. You know, uh, uh, you, you know, because my banker's always cautiously optimistic, which he should be, right? But I talked to my banker. He, he don't really think this is a good time for me to buy a house. I, right? Now I've got another objection. Because last week, we was ready to go. But I didn't get that objection until I what? I got you back face to face again. Now I've got a formula. I understand. If your banker was on board with you and we can get him on board, would you move forward with that house? Yeah, I probably would. Okay, great. Well, let's, you and I go down and talk to the banker together. And let's, you see what I'm saying? Now I'm, now I'm figuring out what the real problem is. By this time, we're at six or seven touches. Now, let's say, I know, you're getting nervous over here. I get it. <laughs> but, but, but it's not that I don't want to buy, don't lose sight of the fact that I want to buy the house. It's just taking me a little bit of time. Now, I wish everybody was an early adopter and an innovator. We went and showed them one time, and they said, draw it up right now. I wish everybody was like that. And there are people out there like that, okay? But, not, but most people are not. So we get to touch number seven. I have no problem, okay? I'm giving you permission. I have no problem for you to say, have you noticed how hard we've worked to earn your business here and to get going? But something, it, it seems like, remember those words? It seems like, it seems like something is holding you back. We're, we're, we talked about this early on when we had Chris Voss on the radio show and he was a negotiator and he said, if you ever want to get a person talking, say it seems like. Seems like you're stuck on this one thing. Seems like you're really interested, but you can't get over the price. It seems like you didn't like that master bedroom. Is that right? And what I'm trying to do is pull, pull this out of you what the truth is. Yeah, stuck on the price. Great, I understand. Is there anything else other than the price that's keeping you from moving forward? No, it's just the price. It's not in our budget. We'd like to get it down. Okay, if I could show you another house, 95% of what you want, better price point, would you be interested in going to see that? See what I'm saying? And this is really where agents begin to fall off the wagon. Would you agree? Is they will not hang in. It's like a 12-round like fight, but they start to fall off in round two or three. Okay? You need to think at the end of that 12 rounds could be a big old fat commission check for you if you are willing to just keep going, keep jabbing, keep to... So, so how many people are struggling at this point of the sales cycle right now of hanging in there these seven touches? Anybody? Okay, all right. Anybody else? 